Hey guys, it's Kevin, and I'm here to bring you a special edition of the Bear Clad Show today. We're going to do a little uh, something different than what we've done uh, in the past episodes. Uh, if you remember, we left off with the last kind of documentary edition of the flood and, and the devastation had just occurred. I uh, wanted to bring you up to date on how the brewery and the staff and everybody here is doing uh, I'm happy to report we're getting closer uh, to the recovery process. We're definitely in the midst of rebuilding now. We've gotten the cleanup part done, which has been just tremendous. And uh, that happened with all the volunteers and, and the great community support and uh, all of the people that came out to support us as a company helped us to complete the the cleanup phase, which was really important with the mud and, and the water and the all of the debris that was on the property has been, for the most part, cleared and and taken away. So now we're in the process of the rebuild, which is exciting uh, in a way. Obviously, uh, we're going through equipment and fixtures and furnishings and things that have been damaged. So we're still in the process of determining what we can keep and what we can't keep and what has to be replaced. So uh, luckily, this uh, week, we did get the declaration for the emergency uh, state of emergency for our area and so that's great news that opens some doors for some relief it's been three weeks now since the flood so that's been a long three weeks of of basically um, working the process for us here internally uh, we're very excited to look forward to our opening or reopening of the brewery in the next couple of weeks and so uh, the next episode you should see after this will be a, a good a good event that we're trying to do, which is is a live broadcast that will hopefully help uh, raise some more funds for people in our community. It'll also be kind of a celebration of us getting back to operating the the business. Uh, Maggie Valley is still open, so you can still visit us there, and and you can see uh, our staff uh, over there at work and and visit and enjoy some beers there. I, I want to tell you today what you'll see is uh, some recounts of what happened right after the flood to where we are right now in the rebuilding phase. And so you're going to hear from our, uh, some of our staff members that were integral parts of, of the recovery process in the last three weeks. I'm really excited for you to meet uh, Margo Bowles, who was our videographer during the the disaster. She did a lot of the live broadcasts you saw on Facebook. She handles uh, our social media communications. And so she really went into a photojournalist kind of mode in the community and really documented a lot of this and, and coordinated a lot of the relief efforts as well. So I'm really excited for you to hear her story and, and see some more of her photography work that she did during the uh, events that happened. You'll also Hear from Tiffany Gibson, who's the uh, operations manager here in, at Bear Waters for, for Canton, and she's going to tell you about what we're doing with the staff and, and kind of how we're putting this building back together and uh, the things that are happening there. And you also hear from Jamie Weiss, who is uh, over our personnel training, and she also does a lot of our communications as well. And Jamie's been an integral part of coordinating and receiving the relief uh, that's been coming in from uh, donations and from private and both uh, nonprofit and, and corporations that have helped us here tremendously in the last three weeks. So really uh, excited to have them come forward today and, and share with you uh, their experience during this process. And we look forward to seeing you all back here uh, in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, and, and, you know, getting kind of back to, uh, what we do best, and that's it's operating the brewery and, and, ha and having the business here in Canton thriving uh, along with our other location in Maggie Valley. And so uh, I really look forward to that. There's, there's a lot of hope here. There's a lot of uh, anticipation, I can tell you, from the ownership and the, and the staff of, of getting you back in here and, and, and welcoming you back and seeing you all again and thanking you uh, with our arms wide open for, for all that you did. Uh, to help us get to this point. So with that, I'm going to step aside and let you um, hear from those folks. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Bear Clad Show. Thank you. 
there. Welcome to Bear Waters and episode three, I think. Um, we're here with Tiffany Gibson and she's going to kind of recount her, you know, perspective behind the scenes of what she's been experiencing from, you know, the day of the flood and being here for that. You know, I think in the last episode we saw her, um, you know, just kind of holding her head like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do? Um, so I, I really wanted to talk to you like in that moment, what was going through your head and then also like moving forward, how we're rebuilding and how, you know, your part has been so integral with all the staff and volunteering um, and trying to get everybody, you know, up to speed and then get this place back open. So I kind of want to like touch briefly on that moment for you, like coming back to the brewery just by chance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we had worked that day, mm -hmm. you know, cut, I cut out early for school pickup and then you know, was watching the rain and by chance stopped by being the one that lives the closest and just saw everything unfolding and just how crazy it was at the time. And then just that it got crazier, you know, there's, we could sit all day and talk about, you know, all the feelings and all the events that were happening, all the people that were coming and just, you know, the amazement, um, you know, but just to kind of catch everybody up, um, where we're at now you know we did all the big stuff and now we're into like the little the details you know the um, time consuming the time consuming <laughs> details for sure on getting the tap room back open you know it's not been quite a month um i had a lot of questions there in the beginning from staff uh what are we going to do how can we help you know everybody was here that first week just in droves you know all the staff were here you know so many dozens and dozens of volunteers um you know the staff of course understandably was concerned like when are we going to work when are we going to open what are we going to do yeah. um you know so it took a few days uh the hard work and the getting the mud out and then we had decided um sat down with kevin and talked about doing a temporary furlough um for hourly employees um so that way they could file for the unemployment and have that little bit of income, you know, Kinda coming in, you know, in the meantime, while we're trying to figure out dates and timeframes and schedules, um, you know, so that I took got, a lot of energy and coordination. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Between them coming in to help, um, you know, since we were closed and trying to organize teams and, you know, you three go here and you four do this and, you know, trying to keep, workflow going you know so and staying on task and just you know getting the bulk of things done in the beginning um to then you know a week goes by you know i got all the information out about furlough and unemployment and you know which boxes to click and which things to put and you know why you're not working right now um you know i got that settled with everyone all that's in motion um and then going to um kind of where we are now you know, and all the big stuff is done, you know, um, kitchen guys are coming in and cleaning, you know, all the equipment, yep. you know, others. I are, think that's actually the mountain Yeah, right I think now. that's what we might hear <laughs> <laughs> right now in the background, um, you know, getting everything clean and back in working order. Um, I've had some of the front of house coming in, um, you know, painting and demo and, you know, just honestly helping me stay organized as well. Um, you know, we've still got a long way to go. You know, it's been, what, three weeks and we've got three more to go. Yep. Um, not quite three more, but, you know, we're going to get there. Everybody's just been so amazing at chipping in and rolling with the punches. And I told them by the time they got, you know, their furlough unemployment, we'd have the doors back open. Yep. <laughs> so it's going to fly by and, you know, kind of, you know, where we're at now it looks clean like on the outside and you know for the most part it is and then it you come inside and it's still kind of in disarray yeah there is you know we've got <laughs> half tables and half walls painted and baseboard gone but you know it's kind of hard to picture right now but we're really coming along just with you know the new tables yep. um that we've got in and thanks to you picking out those awesome stains yeah. <laughs> you know kevin and his paint choices are yep. super rad and this um, is actually the table we're sitting at is 
a piece of an old bowling alley. And, you know, we're really just trying to repurpose everything that we had, you know, stuff that was randomly, uh, a lot of the fixtures are from the owner's houses that they've taken and brought in just so we can kind of rebuild. But this is gonna now be one of our tables here. Um, you know, just, I, I think it's really, in times of need, you know, we're coming up with amazing things to, you yeah. know, supplement because, you know, we aren't where we were and we don't have the means to replace everything that we lost. So being able to, recycle as much as we can. I mean, who would have thought a chunk of an old bowling alley it would be a table in our tap room. But exactly. I think, you know, just like the, you know, other tables that we'll go into that story on a future podcast, you know, there's so much meaning and heart and community in this building. Absolutely. It's just, you know, it's really inspiring and I love being a part of that. Absolutely. And I know the staff, um, you know, we're, I think 32 here total. Um, everybody's ready to come back to work. You know, they're driving by, they're texting, calling. Um, you know, Jen drove through the parking lot earlier. And I said, I know you're in a hurry, but you've got to peek in, you know, take yeah. a look and see where we're at now. Um, you know, and she was super excited about it, even though it's not fully together. Yeah. You know, every day is a step light. closer. <laughs> <laughs> like we're getting there for yeah. sure. Um, well, thank you for sharing all that. And you've been amazing through all this kind of, you know, keeping everybody up to date and, you know, letting the staff know what they need to do to kind of make their ends meet. Um, and also keeping everybody, you know, in check as far as the staff is concerned, like, come on in and scrub this equipment. And, we, and that's Absolutely. what they're doing out there now. Absolutely. Um, but it's been, it's been awesome to kind of see everybody including the staff and the community and, you know, just coworkers, we've all become a lot closer through all of this. So definitely cool to see that light out of the end of the tunnel. You know, the community is already stopping in daily to make sure, you know, Hey, when you open, I'm going to be here day one. So it's very, very exciting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we're two and a half weeks away from our tentative reopening. Um, you know, it seems like a long way, but it'll be here before we know it. Yep. And, you know, I just keep telling everybody we are going to be back and we're going to have even more fun, yep. you know, <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So now we're going to go to Margo Bowles. She was uh, pretty integral in getting all the information out there for everything that's happened here, everything that is happening, continuing forward. She also lent a hand in a lot of... Uh, um, volunteer work for Crusoe in that community. Um, so she's got some pretty cool behind the scenes and backstory that we wanna touch base with her. So let's go on over to her. All right, so we're here with Margot Bowles. Um, she was very integral in documenting a lot of the things that happened the first day and making sure all this information kind of got out to everybody that reached out and was very um, curious how things were progressing. You can see now um, the pictures that you took that first day were pretty traumatic. Um, we were all here. You can kind of still see there's some mud on some of these fermentation tanks still, uh, but it's a far cry from where it was that first day. Um, it's just really inspiring to see all the, the volunteers that have come out that you and I kind of help coordinate together. Um, when you think about this place being two feet full of mud and now it's, you know, this bright, yeah. happy space, it's getting some new paint, we're like livening it up. Um, but you did a lot of work outside of here that I think is really interesting and inspiring. Do you want to talk maybe a little bit about that? Yeah, so I'm Margo. Uh, I am the owner of Margo Bowles Photography as well as the social media manager for here and the photographer. Um, what started out as kind of just a, you know, working for Bear Waters, doing the social media, trying to cover everything, uh, ended up being more of sort of like a labor of love in a way. Um, it developed into something that was bigger than I could have even imagined. Um, I, I initially showed up that morning, the day after the flood, seeing the worst, I mean, seeing three feet of mud in here and it was horrific. And I obviously wanted to document that. I ended up doing a live video to kind of show the destruction, to show everybody what was going on here, to keep everybody informed. 
And then it kind of just developed from there into what ended up almost being my own sort of flood relief effort on behalf of Bear Waters. Um, I kind of just took it upon myself to try to just dive in head first um, to be as much help and assistance as I could provide. Yeah. I um, ended up coordinating, like you said, with, uh, with you on setting up some of the relief efforts and some of the food things that we were able to do. I ended up being able to myself take out at least 300 meals out to Caruso. Um, I luckily had a way to get in to, to the community there. So I was able to have access when a lot of other people weren't. So I ended up uh, taking a bunch of food out for two days in a row. And then while I was doing that, I ended up asking the residents, like, what else do you need? Can I bring you anything else? And so the following day I would bring whatever they needed. I remember and that. It was that yeah. was pretty awesome. <laughs> and it, it was, it ended up just being like, instead of just here I am, I'm delivering food for you. It ended up being like, I was making connections with these people. I was talking to them. It was really touching me. And I, I wanted to just help more and more and more every single day. I was exhausted, but I couldn't even imagine how exhausted they were. And I just wanted to help kind of relieve that in some way. So um, I remember one time you came back and you're like, uh, one of the guys, said they wanted beer yeah. that, that was top on his list can can we find a six packs that yeah. you know that we still have left to exactly. give exactly yeah so w it, that's exactly what happened i delivered a uh, lunch one day and i told him I, I was wearing actually this shirt and i said you know this is on behalf of bear waters um uh and we wanted to you know help out with the community he's like who and I was like, Bear Waters Brewing Company. He's like, oh, I've never heard of you guys. He's like, do you have a sample? <laughs> so unfortunately, I didn't have any that day, but I actually brought a, a whole six pack out the next day. And he was just, you know, he couldn't believe it. It was it was pretty awesome to see that. So um, it, it's funny, actually, like in a way how much beer brings people together. I mean, it's it's been interesting because we've had a lot of feedback. We've had a lot of um, amazing things, but we've also had a couple of negative things saying, oh, you're just a brewery. Uh, what do you matter to the community? There's so much more that needs help out there, which is absolutely true. But we try to do our best to like, as we're in the middle of mucking all this out ourselves, we've been coordinating so much community uh, yeah. help and outreach and, and relief um, that we're not necessarily just a brewery. I feel like this especially just turn into a way to help the community as much as possible. Um, so like one of the stories I guess that I had was that um, I ended up doing the same thing. I, I got some donations. I went to Walmart and bought six bands and a bunch of cleaning supplies, all kinds of things that people had asked for. And I went back out in the community in a Crusoe and I ended up going to the same houses that I had been to already and delivered the things that people had asked for. And I show up to this one house and I, they had asked for a fan. And so I showed up, brought them the fan and they're, you know, kind of like, all right, thank you. You know, um, they were sort of apprehensive a little bit, like, why are you on my property <laughs> sort of thing? Um, but I explained I had brought them lunch the day before. And, um, you know, they, I gave them the fan, they were thankful. And then I, I had actually brought more beer with me that day. Um, so I was like, wait, I have one more thing for you, <laughs> you know, like what, what else can you want on a hot day when right. you're working and then a cold beer? So I went to my car and I got out the beer and immediately just game changer, <laughs> game changer. They opened up, they welcomed me, they gave me a big hug and a kiss on the cheek, you know, and, and it, it light, it completely lightened their day, um, in a way that, you know, I brought the fan, I brought what they asked for, I satisfied that need. But the beer satisfied a different need. It satisfied sort of a social need. And it was sort of a bridge between, I was no longer the volunteer and they were no longer the flood victim. We were just two people sharing a beer, you know, and just having nice conversation. It was kind of just like that little, the little olive branch or something, you know? Right. Um, so it, it, that really struck out to me because I just, I realized how important that we are to the community with that because they, it completely changed their day around. I mean, they even joked, they're like, oh, this is the best donation we've gotten the whole time. You know, and then <laughs> obviously, I mean, they needed a lot more than beer, but it just, the it way something. they lit up, it, yeah. it changed their whole day. They, it just made them so much happier that day. And it just was something they weren't expecting. 
And I realized how powerful it is to have that social aspect of not just like, here, you're the victim and I'm the one who's helping you. Like, I wanted to be kind of equal in a way. And that sort well, of Bear made us kind of was too. I mean, exactly. we were suffering our own tragedy here. Exactly. And in our moment of need, we were still able to kind of organize donation centers and, yep. and put out, how many, how much food did we put out? So, I know we did a count on it. Yep. We, uh, one of the um, amazing companies that helped us with that um, ended up putting out 3,430 meals. It's amazing. And then we had another private chef that came in um, unexpectedly and he helped donate um, more food and his time. And he actually put out another 275 meals. Wow. So around 3,700 meals went out uh, directly from here upstairs uh, between volunteers coming and picking up curbside and us taking them out, people coming and eating it here. It was just, it was insane. It was incredible the amount of people that showed up to help with that. Yep. Um, I could have never imagined getting that much food out. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, and then also Bear Waters has become a place where people had started to reach out to. They had seen my post. Um, they had tried to reach out to other avenues. You know, I mean, obviously first responders had it up to here with everything that they were trying to take care of. So they're not necessarily responding to individuals reaching out, you know, the police were busy. Well, there and, were a lot of recovery going well, on there Exactly. Too. And so, but individual people were feeling like, I don't know who to turn to because my family member hasn't been heard from for a week and nobody's answering me. Like I can't get help. And so they had seen my post. Uh, we actually had a woman reach out and uh, say exactly that. You know, I haven't seen my, or I haven't heard from my uncle in, you know, a week. He lives right in Crusoe where everything had happened. We're really worried about him. We can't get in did you happen to deliver food to one to that area? And I had, and I had accidentally just completely randomly taken a picture of the campground that he lived at. We ended up figuring out where he lived because she didn't, she only had like a, a general area. Right. Um, so it ended up that I accidentally had taken a picture of where he lived and we narrowed it down and I went back and I was able to locate him and I was able to let her know that he was okay. Um, which was, amazing and yeah. profound, you know, that I had basically done a wellness check on somebody on behalf of Bear Waters, but also just because I really wanted to help in every way that I could. And this was now becoming way more personal than just, you know, covering the footage of what had happened and everything. So um, that actually happened twice. I ended up finding, helping to find another family member for somebody who heard me talking about it in Walmart. Right. <laughs> so um, it, it, it was exhausting. I mean, everything that we've been through and that we've done um, just since then has been exhausting, but then also rewarding in so many ways. Um, like I just, the things that I've seen just by going to Crusoe and visiting these communities. I mean, I grew up in the Florida Keys. I've been through hurricanes, but this was different because it's not a wall of water hitting a concrete stilt house that's built for that. This is a wall of water hitting RVs. It's hitting mobile homes. It's hitting old structures um, that aren't prepared for that. I mean, right. it's total devastation. So I, I just wanted to be able to catalog that and to be able to show the destruction and, and what people are going through. But also I wanted to show the beauty of, you know, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, community. <laughs> exactly. That there's so much community there's been incredible outreach with everything. I mean, people have just come together. It doesn't matter what your politics are. It doesn't matter about what you think. Like everybody dropped all of that and just came together. And it's been incredible to witness um, just the amount of messages I've gotten over the past couple of weeks of comments. Um, it's hard to keep up with, uh, but it's been amazing to have that outpouring of love and support from everybody of just like, what can we do? What can we help with? Um, it's just been amazing to see and be a part of that. So I've been happy to be able to, to share that with everybody on another level of, of being able to share it um, with pictures and with videos um, and collaborating on, on those sorts of things um, to get it out there. Cause it's important that people see and that we're not forgotten here too. Uh, right. It's important to have it cataloged and shown like this is what we're going through and um, that, it, that it's still happening. I mean, people didn't just wake up yesterday and everything's fine you know i mean we're here a month later almost and it's still a mess yeah you know still so. trying to rebuild in very many exactly places. Yeah. so i don't feel like my job is done with documenting it i actually kind of have found a new passion for uh, photojournalism i guess as it was um i just 
I, I feel like it's super important to continue with the story of all of it because absolutely, like, like I said, we're not anywhere close to being done with all of this. So I would like to continue to have the support um, for us as well as the community. You know, don't forget about everybody out there. Yeah, um, I definitely want to want to try to keep that going as long as possible so <laughs> well, you've done an amazing job Thank with you. like keeping everybody up to date and communicating back and forth with all the amazing volunteers um and food vendors and everything else that we've <laughs> you know been so fortunate to have outreach to us um craft breweries a plenty and we're gonna actually list everybody in a in a thank you um, because we're just so taken aback by the amazing support that we've gotten from this community, um, the craft beer community, um, disaster relief, you know, organizations. Um, but we want to thank you all for being here, um, helping us rebuild together and keeping this community as amazing as it is. So join us thank on our you. next podcast, which we're hoping to be on the 25th. Thank you.